All right, Brian Powell, Carl Meltzer. Here we are, Run Rabbit Run. Back again for Back. another uh, another run for the money, right? Another run for the money. You you, you made out well last year, eleven grand and yeah, money. I, I cleaned out last year. I cleaned up last year, but uh, I mean this year's going to be you know once again same deal. Don't expect to be the winner. I don't expect to be the guy in contention at the front, but um. You know, 100 miles, it's far, it's a lot of dynamics. Um, a lot of things can play a part here. And, um, the weather, we talked about that, but we all have to deal with it. So I'm going to run my own race like I did last year and uh, let the rabbits go and <laughs> do their thing and uh, see where it pans out, you know? Yeah, last year I just looked back for some reason and saw your mile 20, you told me you felt awful. And you were like sixth place. Yeah. I didn't feel that great last year at mile 20. I was kind of <laughs> just didn't, wasn't really in my groove. Um, I was doing all right, you know, but I just had that wobbly feeling going downhill. I wasn't really all there, but um, that kind of came together after Cow Creek. So around mile 30, I started feeling better, and, um, you know, I surprised myself when I passed Tim and I passed Mike Wolf at that time, and it's just like, whoa, hey, maybe I have confidence here. So now I look back at last year and say, well, just run the race like you did last year, right? And that's probably what I'll do. Um, I kind of don't expect, again, to be near the front, you know, but training's gone well the last month and a half, so... That's good. I'm not hurt, um, but I'm not the fastest guy out there. But the fastest guy doesn't always win. So, yeah, I mean, you were hurt this spring. Uh, mm -hmm. What was going on? I just pulled my calf muscle, um, my right, my left leg um, at Sonoma, and I kind of fought through that a little bit. Um, wasn't really able to. I wasn't really able to train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to Western off the couch, pretty much. Had about a week and a half of training before a Western. Survived, got 10th, that was great. Um, way too tired at Hard Rock, but since then I've recovered well, put on my race, and then I've been able to actually put in some good miles and good verticals. So, you know, we'll see where that pans out again. I think the smart, again, you got to run smart, you know. That's my motto is running smart more than running fast, so I'll be all right. Yeah. Um, one thing that you uh, used to do more often and haven't done much of late is uh, your odds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's because Carl's been very busy, um, and it's yeah. What are the odds this time? Uh, who would I pick to the winner? Well, I'm the favorite because I won last year. I mean, I think there's no doubt about it. You can't say I'm not the favorite, right? There's you can't avoid how, it. You can't avoid it. That's how it is. But again, you know, there's a lot of guys in this race that really haven't raced that much recently. Uh, I would I would suspect that Dave Mackey's pretty darn fit right now. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't raced in a while, so, you know, I would just expect Dave to be really fast. Um, Dave James will be fast at the start, as he always is. Uh, Dave, you're not going to watch this, are you? All right. Um, you know, Schlarp again. Schlarp got lost yesterday, last year. He felt great around mile 50, so he's another one of those guys that hasn't run that many hundreds, but totally has the talent. We know Tim Olsen is fast, just ran UTMB. He doesn't, I talked to him earlier, so, um, he kind of has the same attitude as I do. Just go and see what happens. And sometimes autopilot kicks in, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, Paul Terranova, Jeff Browning. Jeff Browning is one of those guys in this field that probably isn't as well-known. We all know him in the front, but as well-known as maybe some others. But um, it kind of reminds me of you in a way, in, in, in being the meticulous, yeah. like, cool, calm, collected runner. Like, he just, he's not going to be at the front anywhere no and Jeff's a designer and he's all about figuring it out and getting it right you know and Jeff is Jeff is you might call Jeff a 100 mile specialist you know mm -hmm. he's won 8 or 9 times at 100 miles maybe 10 even so that's that shows you the experience factor so Jeff will be you know probably end up running together a lot um, or at least in the same area um, Jesse Haynes great runner western Jesse Richter Josh Oster there's, there's so many guys Paul Terranova I mean these guys we don't know as much but they're just as fast as everyone else, really. So how do you, do you think we're ever going to have a race like this where you're going to have the less experienced guys, the the Schlarbs, maybe the, the Josh Arthurs, just saying, you know what, I'm going to sit on Carl and I'm going to like sit on Mackey for the first 60 miles and just get, you know, almost held back in a positive yeah. way. Um, <clears throat> sitting on Carl, Carl but probably isn't a bad idea. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not telling anybody. You should all go out really hard. Um, everyone should go out as hard as they can, as fast as they can up that first hill and pummel themselves. That's what I think should happen. Um, uh, you should offer a $1,000 preem on that first hill. I'm not making enough money for that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it, you know, it, it does go to show you that the rabbit rarely wins. And I know I say it a million times, but um, we don't see the guy who leads off the bat usually win. Um, so... The smart guy would maybe hang behind me, but, you know, maybe I'll play some games with that, too. I don't know. 
the race. I'm not going to give anybody too many secrets. Yeah. Um, we talked about who's uh, who's looking good on the men's side. Just saw Pam Smith walk by. Yeah. <laughs> Handicap that like, women's field. Well, I got to give Pam, <laughs> got to give Pam the nod. I mean, she beat me at Western. Uh, not that that's a big deal, but still, I mean, Nikki Campbell, Cassie Scallon, her, Carrie Brooksford. Uh, Carrie's running the fifty. In the 50, Kerry Brooks. So. Uh, okay, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. But uh, the women's field is equally as, um, I think, as tight as the men's. You know? um, there's a couple of girls. Like last year, we had Lizzie Hawker. It was kind of a Lizzie Hawker show. And we kind of knew that Lizzie would probably run away, even though she banged her knee. But this year, I don't see. Down, Carl. Down. Olsen just thinks I'm going down. Going down How did it work last year, Timmy? <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Say it to finish. <laughs> um, you know, Cassie's really fast. It's really, it's really hard to say, but I think it'll be close. You know, I think uh, we're doing 30 minutes or so at the finish line. So equally, it'll be both races will be great to watch. It's hard to pick. It's hard to really pick someone there, but you know. And again, uh, sort of on the women's side, you have this pretty good dichotomy of experience versus mm -hmm. yeah. you know raw talent. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really fast women that have thrown down some good 50k, right. some good 50 miles, right. which doesn't mean a lot in 100. And then you got much. Nikki and yeah. Pam. Right. Nikki and Pam are the two. I mean, experience-wise, I mean, you got to give it to even to Nikki. Um, but Pam, obviously, she knew how to run Western Smart, and she came back and ran a great race there. Um, if we see her do that again, you know, this, this race is very runnable. Um, Fred, the race director, will say that it's real hard, but it's pretty runnable, Fred. <laughs> um, and it's pretty fast. You know, it's pretty fast. Um, it's a little long, so it'll be an 18, 19-hour kind of deal again. Probably. Yeah, what do you think the course changes, how that's going to affect things out there? Well, it's going to be done a little bit quicker. <laughs> but other than that, um, the run through town is a lot better. There's less confusion. There's, the Spring Creek turnaround is less confusion. I think there won't be any of that second guessing. Um, Fred explained the you know course directions pretty well, and we all forgot that part of that already. But um, I think it, it's just it flows better. And I think the most important thing with the races is, well, you know, course well marked, good aid stations. As long as nobody gets lost, it'd be good. I mean, I'd hate to see a bunch of you guys get lost like us last year because that was kind of... I kind of feel like I sort of won by default a little bit. I know I had a great race and everything else, but I mean, Schlarb got lost. You know, like you know, he was a front runner guy. So yeah. Last year know. you uh, were kind of coy about it. Last year, but you won in the Rapanui's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were sort of still in the proto stage. Um, the Rapanui's are coming out again. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is that what you're running in tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's my favorite shoe right now with Hoka, and you know, I think they're the best. They're a great shoe for this. Yeah, I'm not changing my not changing my game plan on that one. How, how are they different than some of the other Hoka models you've worn in the past? You run on the Bondi a lot, right? I run on the Bondi a lot. Yeah, there's a little more traction. You know, the it's a little bit smaller, a little lower. Um, so it's kind of like a sort of like a Mafati, but just like really kind of shrunk down, I think, and and better traction. The lugs are a little bit longer, so we'll get better traction in the mud, um, and they're a little lighter even too. So they've improved. You know, they're getting better, and they should be on the market in October, like October, November, coming here pretty soon. So I'll probably expect a lot of people to have those on, but um, I'm, it's been nice that I've been able to run on them for a year to really give them a real test of like, what do I like them or not, you know? And yeah, they're my favorite shoe for sure. Still, okay. I'd be bummed with without. I wouldn't be. No, I shouldn't say I'd be bummed, but I, <laughs> if I had ran on them before, then they weren't available now. I'd be a little bummed, you know, because they are, they're a good shoe, and it's just uh, it's the kind of shoe I like, soft with good traction. So there you go. All right, Carl. Show us how it's done tomorrow. I'll try. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs>